Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome back to the first witness horror game character concept design. I'm not gonna need these. So yeah, we're finally continuing the modeling of our character. Actually, it's not concept design. I don't know why I said that. Uh, we're already following our concept and making the actual game ready model. Of course, it's far from being game ready yet. But as you can see, while I was away, I worked on the topology of quite a few things. For instance, the hat is actually built from this, so it's a little bit level of detail ready, I would say. I also completely rebuilt the shirt, so this is like a full detailed shirt with the thick cloth and everything and buttons look like that and it's a real color that goes all the way around so this is a like a perfect base and later on we can you know optimize it for the game and everything so initially the topology looks like this and yeah i've been experimenting a little bit uh, figuring out how to use the cloth brush so we're gonna be taking a look at that today as well and also i worked on the pants meaning on their topology a little bit but this is just a base decent topology basic one and we're gonna apply the whole cloth thing uh, to the pants today as well yeah that's something i want to do plus a few more extra tweaks that i already did and planning to do probably today but first a quick word from this channel sponsor wing fox and their new course called world building for video games now this is an epic course that involves blender and texturing and modeling and later also working in Photoshop on all of this but mostly this is the building of a 3d world aimed at creating uh, the actual concept design so this is how you do it you create this 3d model of the whole location then you make renders of that and work uh, on top of it to make it truly alive you know the last 10% of details if they're done in 3d they're like 90% of work but if you're working in Photoshop that's like super easy this is a perfect kind of strategy and really it looks like there's a lot of cool tricks that the creator is using here so the course covers architectural design like you know what to start with to be able to work with that how to come up with buildings and everything then you actually build the world you want to create and then you actually create specific product of a concept design from different angles and everything so yeah I personally find this course very interesting so I'll be following that if any of you guys are interested the course is available right now at 47% discount at 69 nice dollars that's before it's fully released so if you want to check it out the affiliate link is in the video description and also the happy Easter event on Wing Fox is still going on so there is this special event page where you can find a whole lot of different really awesome really expensive courses and apply really big discounts with these discount codes that you can find in the video description as well. Now back to the video. So yeah, I also want to mention I worked on the face a little bit. I didn't make the topology for it or anything. Uh, actually, for the topology, I'm still planning to buy that quad remesher add-on. I think at least for this character, that's not going to be actually talking or anything. That'll be totally a good way to create retopology for it. Not having it yet, uh, I did work on the details you can see on the shape of the nose on the shape of these wrinkles they have a bit of a weird shading here so yeah it actually looks like this yeah much more defined and like real old man wrinkles with nice curves i tried to avoid you know perfect bezier curves that you usually get in 3d and have some nice interesting shapes that show some kind of character some kind of you know real anatomy details that are interesting to look at now, also on the neck i applied a little bit of that you see like the hanging hanging skin right here and everything like and generally the shape of the chin is really different right now 
So I worked on it a little bit, but what I also want to work is on the the main weird part of the face. So where we have these um, someone else's eyes, that's where I feel like we really miss the point of it because I worked on the stretched skin right in this place, right? So that's why it's so stretched. There's no actual nose bridge, no fold in here. And it only makes sense if the eyes would be actually sticking out a lot more forward kind of like this right stretching the skin like this that's why it would be here but it obviously doesn't work like that yet so we need to put the eyeballs over here and then adapt the skin to that so it would go kind of like this and also, I, I really want to today work a little bit. I, I really want to work on a lot of things today. Probably won't be able to do all of it. But something I want to work on is to like add actual details of maybe inflammated like bags under the eyes or something like that. Since the eye hole is pretty big, which means there's going to be certain stretching and certain folds will appear like in here probably and in here as well even though there's no actual indentations around the eyes they're sticking out but there's just stretched a lot this is much bigger than what an eye actually usually has as just the opening for the eye so that means the skin is really stretched so yeah it's gonna be looking something like this actually and i gotta say this is way better now it makes way more sense you can actually see why the skin is like that in here. But even without that, it's just a lot more striking, I think. This is a closer to the in-game render. And this is something maybe Lumen will be actually looking like that in Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. I really like it. I still want to think a little bit on the design of the eyeballs specifically. You know, something more interesting maybe. But I don't know, it's kind of cool already. And yeah, about using that quad remesher plugin, I'm gonna be using it for the organic part, so the face, the hands, and this back as well. While I could actually, you know, apply retopology myself, which would be pretty easy as well, but that plugin just makes things so much faster. Uh, and also, I want to apply it to just the shoes. Maybe I will sculpt them a little bit, like they're not important, there will never be a lot of close-up on the shoes, so maybe there will in like the cinematic cutscene. But for now, this is the retopology I applied, and I wanted to add another little detail to the design actually. And that's a little idea that one of you guys brought. So Stickly, Stickly Art, posted this fan art of my concept design. And it's looking really cool, really interesting render. It looks kind of like it's in 3D, but I believe it's all 2D, probably. <laughs> Seems like it, at least. And one interesting part in here that actually solves one problem that I had with the design. A tank top or a t-shirt underneath the, the actual shirt on top. It's like torn apart and there's bits in here. This is like this little detail that's actually gonna help a lot with making the design work in the game. Because in here I have this fly open and just, you know, loose parts of the pants and loose parts of the shirt all hanging and kind of separate. And it kind of works in reality, but if you want to apply it to a game, I'm gonna have to make things a bit more like solid. When you project details on the final mesh, they need to kind of look more like one single thing without a lot of... Uh, you know, these deep holes like that, they're not gonna work really well. And partially because of that, I actually changed something I forgot. The cloth initially went like this sort of, it ended like here and was a weird intersection of details, like the end of the shirt was here and the suspenders were going here. So I think this is a bit better and also makes sense with the amount of cloth for, from the shirt. But I still had this issue of a lot of details floating around. And now I can like make that stretched slash torn tank top or something, wrapping this part around and having like a mass of cloth 
filling up all of this area like that, which will make all of this look a lot more solid and like proper. It's kind of important. I, I haven't had a lot of experience with making all these you know, models for games and everything. But I feel like we need that. We need to do that. So yeah, that's what I want to add like right now. I actually already have like, like a beam cartoon kind of torso base for, uh, for the main character here. If we talk about these two as separate characters, but yeah, we need the torso. I made this clean torso like this with clean topology. And that will be the one part of things that are, you know, filling up this void inside this empty space. And another one will be the actual wife beater, <laughs> I guess. We'll see how it goes. So I want to make sure there's this good message of the stretch from this uh, front back. So actually, yeah, the direction of topology should go like upwards. Yeah, and it will also fill up this little hole in here that I added as well. We definitely need to show this to show the good stretch of the shirt as well, but underneath there will be that tank top. In this case, we don't even really at all need that torso underneath, really, because this tank top is just taking care of filling up all these negative spaces. I'm gonna like hide it. That's my achievement today. So, how do I... Do I use like little separate pieces for it? Because we needed another piece in here, but it should be probably like just one small piece. I'll probably make it one whole thing just to make it easier to work with. So I'm trying to learn a lot of hotkeys for just the modeling. Really speeds things up, like Control R to quickly add a loop anywhere. Then like if you select two vertices, you hit M to merge into a single point. Then I added more like a bridge, edge, edge, shift B, and we connect the two. Really cool. Well, there's some other stuff like Control B is for bevel. Well, E is for extrusion. Th that's what I've been always using. And I guess that's mostly what you need, unless I forget something. So what what do we got? We need to generally push everything inside or oh well, yeah, I'm gonna apply that solidify modifier again. And I'm gonna push all the polygons like inwards through their normals, meaning kind of like deflating. Anyway, it doesn't work that way. But what I can do is I can go to the sculpt mode and use inflate with a negative direction. Something like that and then bring things back up just where I need it. Nice. Now I need to work on like the wrinkles in here. Let's actually see. I was wondering, what is that? I tried a bunch of stuff with a cloth brush, but this is like a cloth, yeah, filter. Gravity, inflate, expand. Well, that's probably not very useful. How do you apply that, <laughs> that kind of filter, yeah. I'm gonna apply the subdivision like this and solidify. I'm gonna keep active because I'll probably not actually use it or something. And yeah, that's where we draw some of those wrinkles and all. So yeah, really, thanks Stickly for your idea. You probably didn't know you were gonna bring it in, but <laughs> yeah, it's really just this little thought. I, I haven't thought of it myself, but I had this issue that I need needed to fill up those negative spaces in the design. And this exactly uh, helps with just that. So really cool. So yeah, let's see, uh, this is quite a tight space here for applying the cloth effect. I'm gonna drag it a little bit, very slightly. Yeah, kind of like that. And yeah, one interesting moment that I really wanted to cover about sculpting with a cloth brush. Maybe some of you guys tried it before and you noticed a problem. 
that when you have your sculpt and you want to add some kind of wrinkles, sometimes they wouldn't, uh, well, act so nicely, you know, proper. Like even right now, you see these wrinkles, they look kind of like silk, maybe? Really small scale. And the thing is, if we go on an even higher level, it will be even worse, like really tiny wrinkles, like this is a giant piece of cloth. And that's because there is no actual like scale in the simulation engine of this brush. So the point is, you can really work with it well if you have the multi-res modifier, so you can go between different layers or levels of subdivision. So if I go to levels lower, it's really becoming like really big wrinkles there. So a really thick cloth, kind of like leather. And on the second stage, it's already like this kind of look. And there's higher topology next to the color. And that's why it gets a bit more wrinkly. But exactly on my sleeves right here, it created this perfect scale that exactly worked really well for designing these wrinkles. They're kind of smooth and big for now, but we can go in into smaller details and, you know, introduce some extra stuff. But uh, probably not with the cloth brush already, but just by sculpting, adding some kind of details. But also actually a little bit, you know, extra wrinklies here and there, maybe even tiny ones, they make sense. So here and there, applying that also works. So, so that's one special detail about it, like a tip that you really need to control the density of topology if you wanna work with the cloth brush. So just, you know, subdividing the hell out of it or remeshing into some kind of voxel remesh into a super dense topology, that's gonna introduce a lot of problems with the scale of the wrinkles. Oh yeah, and another thing, really important modes, like usually you work with radius and strength for most brushes, sometimes there will be like pinch, but with a cloth brush, it's really important, not these actually, they, these didn't find these useful at all. <laughs> What's important are these two modes, so uh, this is what you actually do with the cloth, you know, you can drag it, you can push it, you can pinch it or pinch it like perpendicular to the stroke so you can create some kind of like you know like this kind of kind of thing it, it's sort of you drag it like this and it pinches in following your stroke and there's a bunch of other ones but what's also useful is not to use radial brush because this one a lot of the times is just not productive for actually introducing some some kind of wrinkles but this other mode is called plane so it sort of applies things in a line so you're using like a rake that applies this effect of pinching or whatever and that's something that really introduces much more interesting details so i think on yeah on these sleeves i used this expand mode with uh with the plane mode as well and and I just went through the, the whole sleeve and did something like this, but on a lower subdivision level. So there we go. You see how cool this is? And you can really work with this afterwards, you know? And yeah, there's the second piece of pants as well. Looking really cool. You can experiment with it, you know, going back and forth, maybe introduce a little bit of this expansion and then use the drag modes to, you know, maybe you don't like it here, so I'll drag it around. You can also smooth, of course, just generally. It's not a cloth thing, but just removing the detail of the wrinkles somewhere. I'm gonna drag it down a bit, and you see I'm dragging not just a little circle of a detail, but like all the, all the pans, all of them, because it's this plain mode, really cool. And this way we can make this these pans like heavier and like that. How cool is that? Like I barely did anything. I don't deserve this. This is so good. Hmm, I should have really applied that symmetry before I started doing this. Because there's not a lot of good ways to, you know, transfer that afterwards. I guess I'm gonna have to redo it. Good thing I didn't do too much work yet. So yeah, solidify is fine. We definitely don't need to add details in the thickness of the cloth. But yeah, symmetry, you better apply it before you start sculpting. Just 
A little massage. <laughs> this brush is so cool, I, I absolutely love it. And yeah, of course, we need to work with, you know, already applied symmetry, because mostly I'll be working, you know, on both sides at the same time. But after that, you want to get to the other side and introduce some kind of changes so it, it wouldn't look distractingly symmetrical, since I'm not going to be actually using symmetrical UV mapping or something like this is not 1999. So I'm going to expand a little bit. Hmm, interesting. So if you grab, you sort of press and it just grabs for that one piece and you can really push it around. It doesn't create like a line of some kind of dragging. It's just one point and then you can do something with it. So I'm gonna add some kind of stretched knee parts. You know how fans have a bit of an extra thing from bending the knee. Oh yeah, this is so good. Specifically on the wrinkles in here where the knee bends on the inside. But I, I think it's really hard to make those like really long wrinkles. Well, that looks forced. So yeah, generally it just creates this. Really pinches cloth together into like a, a ridge or edge or whatever, something like that. If it's strong, you can make it a lot weaker. Ooh, that looks so cool. Yeah, that's the thing. If you make it weaker, it doesn't mean that the effect of the cloth will be less. It's just the fact of the pinching is less. And it really introduces unexpected special things as well. Like probably in here it would be cool. And yeah, after you get the interesting texture of the wrinkles, you can really just push the shape around to get something nice. Maybe some butt. And yeah, to think of it, I'll probably... Well, if I want to keep the sculpt, I, I, I'll I have to not introduce any changes to the topology. So really, I need to just sculpt on top of this base of the pants, just as it is. And I think for the pants is totally a reasonable thing to do. So really subdividing a lot and drawing, you know, all the pockets and all the other details. Uh, one thing I'll add is probably little uh, pieces of cloth for the belt holders, even though they're not used in here, they still should be a three-dimensional detail. But yeah, aside from that, it's uh, pretty cool. It's kind of looking even grosser because it's like, what kind of underwear is this back wearing? Like, it looks weird. But of course, I think I'll apply much more recognizable details of actual torn cloth. So it wouldn't be looking like something that was designed this way. Actually, mostly it should, of course, be like alpha of holes. That would be the main thing. There's not a lot of point in sculpting the torn edge a lot because it's a really stretched hole and when the cloth is stretched, the holes are really round. Oh yeah, this is looking really good. I also wanted to try to either use the cloth brush or use the crease brush to create like a little seam. I don't need it to be like super believable, right? Like which side do you close it? I think it should be actually here. No, there is no way. It should be here. So yeah, this is one thing I'm, I'm gonna just fake it. Contrary to, you know, all this area where I, I actually created folds and separate pieces of the cloth. And here I'm gonna just draw it in a little bit. Oh, there's not a lot of polygons in this part. So yeah, it, it'll look a little bit weird like that if you zoom in, but from a distance, Oh, it did not apply here at all. That's because the shirt is already not symmetrical. So I'm gonna do it additionally in here. So there we go. 
Uh, I feel like white eyes are not looking that great. Maybe because they don't really have actual irises. Oh my god, black eyes look really good. I think we're going with black guys. Black eyes, guys. Like maybe saturated black, like, yeah, like this color. From the distance, it's just dark. But when you're getting closer, it's just this gross pus color. Really good. <laughs> I think I like it. Maybe we'll even paint a little bit of the brighter, more saturated, this gross color that on the edges of these, something like that. Now, I would sculpt the face a little bit more just for fun, but really before I uh, introduced retopology, I'll have to reproject all the details and they're, they're gonna get worse with reprojection. So it's best to not detail it too much yet. So yeah, hopefully in the next episode, I'll have the plugin and everything. So yeah, uh, for the sake of avoiding perfect symmetry, you know, I'm gonna push the cloth on the legs around a little bit individually. Probably this time we'll be using the radial mode. Uh, a lot less strength. And second subdivision level. Yeah, this kind of stuff. Oh, that, that's looking cool. There you go. Now that doesn't look symmetrical. This is a bit weird, but yeah, we'll see when we'll actually get to much more detailed cloth details. So yeah, kind of the way I did this little detail here and kind of the way I tried to fake the color on the shirt in the this version. So all of this was a fake sculpted color and overall it looked very much, you know, game ready to project on something else. But yeah, I decided to go with a much more legit looking shirt for a variety of reasons. Mostly my curiosity, I just wanted to make it good. But for pants, I think it's it really makes sense to make it simple because pants don't really have like a color that's supposed to stick out, you know, or anything like that. Everything is just on the surface perfect to just sculpt and fake this kind of details in this sort of fashion. Oh yeah, that face is looking way better now with actually applied tension on the eyes and everything. I feel like his skin should be a little bit more yellow. I really liked that gross color of the eyes. So yeah, this is really healthy and we should go a bit more like that. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> and the hat, also this color, I don't know, maybe it should be a bit like that. But the pants, yeah, pants are good. I like this color a lot. The boots would probably go kind of darker, but maybe not too dark. Definitely not as reflective. But all of this, of course, is not that important for now. I want to make these eyes a lot more glossy, shiny. And yeah, the, the skin on the face of the, of the guy should be pretty reflective, like moist old man. Disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, I guess for now, this is it. Um, this is the kind of progress I'm making very slowly. I want to make a separate video about the kind of state of mind I'm in right now with all the moving and everything, but like really very little work is being done. Also because of a lot of work needs to be done with documents and everything is crazy. So yeah, don't have a lot of time to work on all of this, but when I do, I just want to make it nice and neat. You know, we just go back here to have everything very, very good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this process. Hope uh, some advice is helpful or maybe it's just uh, kind of fun to watch the progress uh, of shaping up this character, you know? I think it's really cool. We're definitely animating these elbows a little bit. I'll add like extra bones in there that will be like moving a little bit. That'll look pretty cool. Sometimes he will be like some idle animation. He will be like maybe like stroking this back or hugging it as well or something kind of painfully or something. But yeah, I, I really like the way this guy is shaping up, as, especially right now as we solve this area, you know, things start to make sense. This shape really works. Cool. Like I can see him. He almost can already be 
in the game with even this basic level of detail. To be honest, we could move on further, you know? Maybe we will, because I really need to ration the amount of effort I put into every part of the game, and this already sends all of the message that I need. Maybe some texture on the shirt, on the face, and you know, maybe some work on the on the hands, on the boots, on the pants. Just in like on the level of texture would be just about enough, really. And if anything, we can always work further on it and import and update it in the game so you know maybe maybe it's actually a good idea to just adapt what we already have almost with a little extra stuff and just see how we can actually make this character alive in the game which is a lot of new areas for me in there so yeah really interesting really fun and uncharted to me so looking forward to all of this but for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I just love the way the topology looks. Can I make the game look like this to show all the all the topology that I made? <laughs> that would be very nice.